I had no real strategy other than practicing this. I did think about killing Josh, um, but I realized that there's just too many cameras in the room. Every home cook has that one dish that they're more confident in than any other. That one dish that they know can truly compete with the pros. Or can it? Today, one imposter chef takes on two very professional mythical chefs to see if they got what it takes. Everybody, please welcome today's guest, Eddie Burback. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I guess we can We're doing comfortable. hugs, yeah. <laughs> it seemed right at the time. Um, Eddie, you were- like an order, a hug her if she feels hug comfortable. Her. <laughs> so I'm like one of those parents who's like, you have to give consent to be hugged from Auntie Free Destiny. Hugs. Eddie, welcome Free to the Mythical hugs. Kitchen. Thank you. <laughs> what is the dish that you are more confident in than any other dish in the entire world? So it's not, that's not exactly why I picked my dish. Because okay. I am not good at cooking at all. I would Fair. say it's like, my weakest skill. But my girlfriend Chrissy's great at it, and she helped me pick uh, cacio e pepe. Okay. Um, because it's, wow. I guess like it's, you said technique wise hard to nail, mm -hmm. but also simple to remember how to make. True. And that's all I need. I need to be babied into it. I need to start my cooking journey with something that I can make just like in a pot and not have to prepare meat or anything like that. Um, this is gonna be an incredibly hard challenge because really I have hard. made cacio e pepe once in like 18 years of cooking and I yeah. screwed it up Me too. so Me badly. Too. This is gamesmanship. I, I love this. I also eat it a lot. So I know Huge. how it tastes. So that's good. I guess, tell me that, the, is that good? It's yeah, so no, no, it's definitely it's good. good. Yeah, yeah. Tastings like that. If you guys wanna, if everybody here wants to tell me that things I'm doing are good the whole time, that would be great. That would so make good. me feel good. That's like so a good. mythical yeah. kitchen, like normal thing. Yeah, yeah, even if you see me doing something bad or dangerous, I, I will prefer if you say, good job. Eddie, you may not be able to self-soothe, but today we're gonna find out if you can cook because all of our cacio e pepe dishes, they will be blind taste tested by a judge and they're gonna find out if they can. You can turn your back. Oh. And oh. then we're gonna flip around on three, one, two. Catch the imposter chef! So I guess I'm making Cacio Pepe. You wanna know a fun fact about me and Cacio Pepe? We don't get along very much. The first time I ever made Cacio Pepe was whenever I was dating my now husband and um, I screwed it up so bad that the cheese was completely coagulated at the bottom and there was a huge pool of oil and just bare noodles on the top. And guess what? Still got married. So I'm just seasoning my pasta water with some salt. Some people say to season it like the sea. I think that's a, a crock of BS. I think it should be nicely salted, but not too salty because you're just gonna salt it later and you have so many things that impart salt that you don't need to do that. We're gonna use bucatini noodles. I love bucatini noodles. They're not my favorite noodle, but I think they're cute. I'll tell you why I like them so much. They have a little hole in the middle and this little hole in the middle allows sauce to get trapped in it. And cacio e pepe, the sauce is so damn delicious that I really want it to just live in the noodles, just exist in the noodles. All right, so I'm gonna take my bucatini noodles and put them into salted pasta water and I'm gonna let them cook for approximately nine minutes. Now, why am I doing only nine minutes? Because I want it to be what? Al dente! Oh my gosh, incredible. Alexa, set a timer for eight minutes and 50 seconds. Eight minutes and 50 seconds, starting now. And that's my girl. So, cacio y pepe. Cacio cheese, pepe, pepper. And I'm gonna be using two very distinct peppercorns because why? I'm a chef. Sorry, Eddie. I'm gonna take some telecherry peppercorns. Now the, the container says, these are bright and punchy. These are compote peppercorns from Cambodia. These are spicy and rich. Spicy, rich, bright and punchy. So I'm gonna take half tele cherry peppercorns and then half of these compote peppercorns. Oh no, I spilled it all over the place. That's fine. I'm just gonna grind these. All right, that looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna judge my pasta a little. Make sure nothing is sticking to the bottom. If you put oil in your pasta water, grow up. So I'm just gonna take some of my pepper and I'm just gonna have it kind of bloom and perfume in this naked pan here. It's gonna release some oils and some scents, which is what we want. We really want the pepper flavor to be imparted wholeheartedly throughout this dish. And now we get to the gaccio part, the cheese part. I'm actually shredding uh, Pecorino Romano, 
which is a little bit saltier, a little bit more intense of a cheesy flavor, and Parmigiano Reggiano, right over here, has a crystalline salt compound that I think really, really aids its, itself in the cooking process. I think it tastes really delicious paired with the pecorinos. I'd say that's 50-50. All right, let's give our peppercorns a little mix. Yep, smells exciting, smells good. Okay, I'm just gonna take a ladle and I'm just gonna add this. And now we have made pepper water and our noodles are going to cook in this pepper water in a little bit. I'm gonna take a ladle of my pasta water and I'm gonna add it to my cheese mix. I'm not gonna add too much. I'm gonna make it look kind of like a paste. You can see that it's melting down nicely. I think I might need more cheese, but we'll find out, we'll find out. A little bit more, just a little bit, okay. Okay, let's just whisk it. It's still a little clumpy, I'm not gonna lie. We are getting a lot of clumpage. This is more clumpage than I was anticipating. I'm not panicking, I know what the hell I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna add my noodles. And look at that, introduced to that beautiful speckled water. Very nice, very good. Okay, I'm going to take my cheese mix. And what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna pour it in here and pray to the cheese gods that everything's gonna work out. I'm gonna add a pat of butter for insurance. Okay, our cheese is melting, that's good, that's good, guys. Something's happening. Oh, my cheese is starting to coagulate. Okay, let's just move with confidence and speed. As I stir furiously, you should head over to spork.com and see what zodiac sign you are and see if it aligns with their pasta that they think you are. I'm a Gemini and they think I'm a Kabatavi or whatever the heck. I don't think I am. I'm a Rigatoni Rigatti. Everybody knows that. I'm beloved. Check out spork.com. Yeah, it's all about like temperature and timing and honey, I ain't got none of that. <laughs> I just got two kinds of peppercorns and two kinds of cheese. Just a little bit of time, a little bit of time, a little bit of patience. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Very good, uh-huh, nice, good job. I'm gonna taste my food. Mm hmm it tastes really good. The texture is slightly off, I'm not gonna lie, but it does taste really good. I think if I plate it, Jordan will notice. Ah, screw it, let's do it. I'm just gonna take it. I'm just gonna plate it. Okay, very good, uh-huh, nice. Got your Pepe, okay, okay, that's that's happening, I guess. A little bit, hide the cheese clump, pour some of the sauce over. Beautiful, look at that, stunning. No! <laughs> here, design, this will be the decor. Let me just shred a little bit more cheese on here. Uh-huh, very good, very good. To hide what I did, my monstrosity. And then a little bit more of peppercorns. There we go. Okay, I guess I made pasta cacio e pepe. Thank you for watching. Your move, better chef and Eddie. <laughs> okay, so I am sort of cheating with this dish, but that's that's okay, because I'm the imposter chef, so I think I can do whatever I want. Uh, this is not a traditional uh, cacio e pepe. It's a combination of, I, I don't know what the traditional, I think the traditional dish is still just called pastina. That's what the pasta is called as well. You make it with like chicken broth until it absorbs it and you mix in some butter. The dish combination is just adding elements of cacio e pepe to that. This dish was mainly practiced with me and my girlfriend Chrissy because she's great at cooking and I'm terrible. So we practiced this a bunch so I, I hopefully can't screw it up. Um, but if I do, let's blame her. <laughs> what I'm gonna do first is grate some of the cheese just because I'm not very fast with it and I wanna make sure um, that I have enough when I need to put it in. Guys, what's the proper method here? Like this way? You're doing great, sweetie. Okay, well that broke off right when you said it, so. I also, with uh, pastina, thought I had never had it, but when Chrissy made it uh, last year, I had my Ratatouille flashback to childhood moment where I realized my great grandma had made it for me. Completely forgot that memory. So there's a kind of nice connection to this dish with my personal life and also panic with whether or not I'm gonna mess it up on camera now. The pastina becomes almost like a mush, so you're not really trying to nail making pasta properly and dry and then putting a good sauce on it. This is more combining it all into one cheesy kind of peppery pasta mush, which tastes good, so I guess that's all that matters. I had no real strategy other than practicing this. I did think about killing Josh, <laughs> um, but I realized that there's just too many cameras in the room, so it might reveal, you know, my crimes. Is, it... Is that you with the blow dart gun? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, there's a couple of methods I tried. There was blow dart gun, non-blow dart gun, otherwise known as a regular gun.
I'm gonna put the pasta in. There we go. How much do you guys fight the urge to not just stir things constantly? Uh, when I look at something in a pot, I'm like, oh, I better move that or it's gonna burn. It's in liquid. About? That's nothing? All stirring should be intentional. Oh, okay. <laughs> It agitates starch. Okay. How much do you want your starch to be agitated? I don't want to pay attention to the science of it. I just want to listen to my taste buds. Okay? I want the food to give me that ratatouille moment where like a bunch of lines are coming out because he had a strawberry so good. This will probably be enough cheese, but we'll see. I'll maybe make more. I didn't set a timer. Set a timer for three minutes. And it'll just vibrate on my arm. I don't need to hear about it. You can just do it. I have, um, a uh, Siri voice on, on my iPhone and watch that uh, I don't think anybody else has. It auto said it when I updated my phone, but I love, oh, what's going on here? Somebody tell me the science of how to fix this. You agitated the starch too much. Okay, so I shouldn't be stirring. Well, I don't know, do you want it? I don't want it to overflow. Put your spoon in it and it'll stop it. See, that's what I was looking for. Some of that, that the touch of a, of a chef. Okay, so it looks like the pasta has uh, almost fully absorbed the broth to where I can put the butter in. So I put the heat down to medium, and then I'm just gonna plop a butter in and let it melt. And then I'm just gonna stir that around a little bit. The Siri thing I was saying is not very interesting. So it's, it's bad that we left it on a cliffhanger. My Siri just, this voice for some reason, like Siri wants to send a text and I say, don't, he sounds disappointed. So I'll go like, uh, text Tony something and it'll get it wrong. And I say, don't send. And he goes, I won't send it. <laughs> and I feel bad for him every time. All right, the butter is melted. So I think I'm just gonna put the cheese in and let that melt and put pepper in and that's about it. This dish is, I believe, idiot proof because I'm doing kind of well right now. So you guys can applaud, it's fine. If you, thank you, thank you. I put the cheese in. <laughs> All right, cheese looks melted. I'm gonna also bring it down to low. And then I'm just gonna add pepper. I'm putting a lot of pepper in this just because it's such a mush that when I stirred it before, it's kind of tough to, to taste the pepper unless I put a bunch in. So, you know, it's kind of the only rule I'm going off of. Gonna stir this a bit. Definitely wetter than when I made it before. But, I don't think I hate it. I think it does need a little bit more cheese. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit more pepper in this and I think it's, I'm just gonna say it's done. So <laughs> if you say something's done, then it just is. I'm just gonna put this in. I'm gonna put a little bit of Parmesan on top and then some pepper. And then we're good, actually pepper first. No, changing my mind. I'm calling it. There you have it, my pastina cacio e pepe. Cacio e Pepe. It is known as Italy's most ancient pasta dish. Sheep herders used to walk around with dried spaghetti in their pockets, a little sack of Pecorino Romano cheese, which is maybe the world's oldest cheese, and some black pepper. They would crush it up and eat it for lunch. What both Nicole and Eddie did to Italy's most ancient pasta dish is an absolute shame, and I'm here to teach them how to cook it properly as I have a protein shaker conspicuously in the shop. We'll get there. I'm taking spaghetti a la chitarra and chitarra means what, Nicole? Guitar. Guitar, because the way they would make this pasta, they would physically press it through strings as opposed to rolling it out and cutting it, uh, much like a guitar. So we got that going. I'm gonna toast my peppercorns while that is boiling. Um, Nicole used a timer, so I'm gonna use Alexa too. Alexa, play Pepas by Faruco. These peppercorns, they're burgundy style peppercorns grown in Ecuador from a family run farm. I have no idea. I tasted them the other day and I really liked them. Cheese, uh, Pecorino Romano is the only cheese that I'm going to be using uh, because Parmigiano Reggiano, uh, Parmigiano from Parma, Pecorino Romano, Romano is from Rome. This is a Roman pasta dish. Uh, I don't appreciate, I think all the Italian city states should have remained separate. I'm very anti-Italian unification. And so I'm just gonna grate a whole lot of cheese in there and then, Here's what, sorry, uh, here's what we're gonna do. Spaghetti, don't know how long it takes at all. I'm gonna stir it around. There we go, we're gonna leave that in there. It's gonna burn my hands later. We're gonna give the peppercorns a nice little toss. Um, we're letting that go. Got a bunch of cheese grated. I'm very anti-pasta water. You saw Nicole add pasta water in there and then you served what? The wettest spaghetti I've ever seen. I said little Tony's in North Hollywood had the wettest spaghetti in the valley. 
No way, Nicole took that title away from them and that's a shame. I'm anti-pasta water because the idea is that you're getting the starch from the pasta water to emulsify your sauce and cling to the pasta. Every pasta water is going to be different based on the amount of surface area of the pasta, amount of water that you have in there. Is it fresh pasta? Is it dried pasta? The cook time of the pasta, it's all going to be different. So that's why I'm standardizing my pasta water. We got 10 ounces of lukewarm water and a protein shaker. Got the blender ball in there so it don't clump up. Yeah, it smells like chocolate, <laughs> chocolate coconut protein that I drink every morning. And I'm gonna add three tablespoons of flour. I'm gonna shake this up. I'm gonna add it as needed. If I need to cheat, Nicole cheated by, how'd you cheat? I literally didn't do anything. Oh. Did you add butter? Yeah. Yeah, she cheated. Catch a Pepe has no butter in it. Okay, um, so I opened with I cheated. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, so I got my starchy water here. This is pasta water now. Look at that. <laughs> Thick and starchy. This weak. Wimpy, 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 hefty, hefty, hefty. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna bash the hell out of this. These peppercorns, they say they have a burgundy-like red wine color. Nice and finely ground. Crazy aromatic, gonna add a ton of flavor and texture. We're gonna check on the spaghetti, ow. Okay, I'm gonna let this cook for a second and then we're gonna utterly fail at this. But you're gonna enjoy watching it. Uh, pa okay. Oh, this is gonna be such a disaster. Pasta's like pretty much cooked. Now I'm gonna <laughs> test out my theory. There we go. Hold on, ye have little faith. That is, oh my God, that's, that's way too thick. Okay, wait, 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 hold on. Actual useless pasta water. That's going in there. I'm gonna thin out, cause this is perfect. The method works. Everybody agrees with that. Oh, I didn't practice this at all, by the way. We're gonna add just a little bit of that now. Uh, you have particulate emulsifiers and you have chemical emulsifiers, right? Flour emulsifies things, which is to bind proteins, fats, and waters. Uh, particulates do that by physically just absorbing it, so flour in a roux, and then chemical ones do it by physically changing the protein structures. This would be a particulate emulsifier using flour. There we go, boom, science, baby. Cooking is hot, nasty, badass science. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and get so much of that flour to cling to the outside of the pasta. The pasta is just above al dente, which means what? <laughs> gonna get a whole lot of pepper. Want a lot of pepper in there. Again, when pepper and cheese are the only two flavors, you gotta go hard on both. So the idea, check this out. The idea is to make this hot and wet enough to be able to absorb all that cheese and create a perfect emulsified sauce. Let's go over here, because I need this to be hot enough to go right into the cheese. Here we go, and then I'm gonna wait for the exact right moment of this to be thick, hot, and wet enough to go into that cheese, in which case, I will violently agitate the starch with chopsticks, which are the best noodle cooking tools in the world. And unto about to do it, baby. We're going in, and I'm gonna start a sort of cheese tornado and pasta. Go, go, go. <laughs> go, go, go. We're doing it. We're doing oh, it's so wet. This is perfectly emulsified, which is great. As long as the kitara absorbs a little bit of that on the plate, we're, we're good to go. I need to taste the wetness real quick. It is probably going to taste like a floury mess. That's perfect. We did it. No butter, no cheat, no little pastina. I am a cooking god, and I will go down with the greats like Gusto from Ratatouille. This plate is significantly too large. Beautiful, pasta in. Just gonna garnish with a little bit more of this brown pepper. Why is it so brown? I did not know it was so brown. And then a little bit of cheese. What, you guys don't cheese notch? Bro, I love my cheese notch. <laughs> a little bit of cheese on top. Bingo, bingo. There, it's cacio pepe. All thanks to my winning ingredient, slencha. Welcome Jordan from spork.com. Hi. So before you, you have three cacio e pepe dishes. Please enjoy. Ooh, okay. I love cacio e pepe. First of all, I love pastina. It's so good. Mm -hmm. mm. Nice. This one almost tastes a little eggy, almost like carbonara. Mm. But it's delicious. I love how much pepper there is. It's creamy. This one looks like a different kind of pepper. This one almost looks like it has Sichuan peppercorns ground up on top. Mm. Does it? Was I right? I can't tell. I don't know, maybe not. Okay, still good. I mean, good, creamy. It does have less of an egginess than the first one does. The pepper is a lot sharper, but also really good. 
Okay, and then this last one is this Bucatini. I love Bucatini. This one seems to present with the least amount of pepper, but the biggest pieces of pepper on top. It is Bucatini. Mm, okay. Delicious, very good. I love the big pieces of pepper. I wish there was more. Um, and it's not quite as creamy as the other two. It's a little bit lighter. Okay, also I want someone to clarify, they did not make the pastas, correct? No. Okay, because if they had made the pastas, I would have been like a chef, I guess has to have made the bucatini. I feel like that's the hardest pasta to make, but if they didn't, that changes things a little. I think pastina is a very homey type of pasta. This to me feels like something that your mom or your grandma would make you when you were sick, which I think a lot of people would say, oh, then that means it's probably not the chef. But I think it is, the, I think it is a chef maybe. I think chefs like things that are easy, things that are comforting. And I think I could see like a chef making themselves this after work. I also think this, I think a chef made this too, because something about the type of peppercorns that were used feels a little bit different. It's extremely creamy. I honestly think Josh made this. If I just had to guess knowing nothing, knowing Josh. I'm like, I think Josh made this based on the flavor of the peppercorns. This one is the least creamy, it's the lightest. They use Bucatini, which Bucatini is very chefy, but the sauce is so much lighter. There's not quite as much flavor because the things that are used are used minimally, which, hey, maybe you're a minimalist chef. But for me, I think these other two have more flavor. So I think these two are the chef, this one, is not the chef. <laughs> I made that. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's good. It's just fine. I just wanted more pepper. I know. But it tastes, it tastes, I liked all three of them. It's, it's just fine, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't do my best. I wasn't my mythical best. And then we have the actual imposter chef who fooled the Hi. judges, Eddie Furback. I'm Jordan. Hi, Eddie. Nice, nice to, to meet you, you, Eddie. You made this? Yes. And Josh made this. Mm, yes, okay, sir. so I was right, in a way. Um, this is delicious. It was definitely taught to me by my girlfriend, Chrissy. Okay. So like, she walked me through it. I did make it here, but it's not like my own invention, like the, with the portions and everything. Interesting, I love it. And what kind of peppercorn is this? Uh, so it's an Ecuadorian, uh, burgundy colored peppercorn, but then also I used a protein shaker filled with flour and water instead of pasta water to make a creamy emulsified sauce. Eat it, Italy! <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. I love your corrupt nation. government. Sorry, no, oh Italy. Oh my God. A whole country you're talking about, just a whole nation of people. Should have been city states. I'm just saying, Napoli, rise up. Uh, Eddie, congratulations, you conquered your fear of cooking and you officially you. fooled everybody Yay! as an imposter Thank chef. You. Thank you, appreciate it. Tell the people where they can find you. Um, uh, either on my channel, uh, Eddie Burback on YouTube, or my channel with my uh, twin brother, Tony. Our channel is called Burback, so they're very similar names. <laughs> Tony, come on here, see if you can make carbonara. Pasta shapes are the new zodiac signs. Find out what pasta shape you are at spork.com.